So let's see what that gets us. All right. So previously we got to around 25 thousand uh, game objects on screen to put us at 30 frames a second. And so now I'm going to run this. This is my entity component system. I'm going to start at 26,000. Uh, and I can see I'm already doing pretty well up around 100 frames a second. So let's just add some more. Let's see where we end up. All right. So I'm at 76,000, 86,000. Uh, let's get to like say 96,000. That's going to put us around 30 frames a second once they're all on screen. Uh, so 96,000 as opposed to our previous 26,000. You'll notice we're not dealing with any game objects. Now, I mean, I can see these in the scene. They're all there. They're all 3D ships. There's just a lot of them, right? 96,000 of them all moving around here. But uh, there we go. So 96,000 uh, ships on screen. Uh, you know, maybe we can go a little bit higher to get us to 30 frames a second. But you can see massive performance boost using the Entity Component System. And, you know, yes, it is a conceptual shift of saying, okay, I, I can't just have these individual objects with these individual scripts on them. You know, I'm going to process these all together and, and I'm going to work with this sort of entity data. But there are just huge trade-offs. Uh, you get huge amounts of performance for doing that. And that's not even all. So this is, you know, 96,000. That's, that's pretty good. However... I don't, I'm not currently using the burst compiler. I mentioned the burst compiler previously about how the burst compiler is going to add uh, this, you know, all this new, you know, basically this vectorization stuff, utilizing CPU uh, benefits and things like that. Let's look at that. So I'm going to go to my jobs menu here and I'm just going to turn on uh, my, my burst compiler, my burst jobs here. Okay, that's all I'm doing. The great thing about the burst compiler is if I've implemented the entity component system, I don't have to do anything else. All right, the burst compiler just works. I just get benefit. There's no reason not to. And so I'm going to go to jobs, use burst jobs, and I'm going to hit play. Same code that we just looked at, and let's see where we end up now. So previously, I went to 96,000 to get to 30 frames a second. So where does 96,000 put us right now? So 96,000 puts us at about 50 frames a second. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see how high we can get. And so uh, I'm going to get to, I believe, I think I can do one more, 156,000. All right, so we started originally in the classic way of doing things uh, at 17,000, which was really good. You know, 17,000 game objects, granted, they're not that complex. And using the entity component system with uh, Burst Compiler, I have 156,000 uh, objects uh, on screen. Now, it's worth noting that... You know, when I'm using the job system, when I'm using the classic system, I'm basically CPU bound, right? Because I, it's all, you know, either single threaded for classical or multi threaded, but I basically just, I, I cap my CPU and that's why I can't go any higher. But now with the entity component system with burst here, I am completely GPU bound. So if I pull this over here, you're going to see that I am, I'm, I'm using an NVIDIA uh, 1080. Uh, I am at completely GPU capped. And my processor, which is an i7, is sitting at a cool 30, 30 to 32%, right? So that means that if I were to get a, say, a better graphics card, I could continue to just boost this to insane levels, all right? When we delivered this on stage at GDC using uh, the machine that had, I, I think, uh, a, a next tier card there, I think it was a TI or whatever, we got like 350,000, uh, something completely ridiculous. So... Yes, massive performance boost here. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so it's a simple example, I get that, but why would I ever need this, All right? I, you know, this style of game, this sort of bullet hell style, 2D shooter style game, I would never even need 17,000 enemies. Why would I ever need 156,000 enemies on screen? And the answer is you really wouldn't. However, the this, this performance, this code, allows us to do a lot more. So one, we could just have performance. You know, I could, you know, maybe I only have 500 enemies, but maybe they're 500 very performant en enemies. And if this is a mobile game, that means I'm using less CPU, less battery, I'm generating less heat. You know, so performance doesn't have to be like, you know, I don't need to boost things. Sometimes I can just be more performant and that's going to benefit me a lot in the long run. But I also can do a lot of really computationally heavy stuff with this. Let's say I wanted to do, you know, mesh deformations or detection algorithms or things like that. Or uh, another example we sort of came up with is let's say we're talking about the kind of the exact same thing here. We're talking about the, the exact same sort of 2D shooter game. Maybe I don't have, you know, 17,000 or 150,000 enemies that I myself am fighting. Maybe I want to simulate a real-time massive space battle 
going on all around me. I don't want it to be an animation. I don't want it to be like a pre-baked video. I want it to be real ships moving, flying around, attacking each other. And so that's uh, what we generated here. So this is basically the 2D shooter game where I'm, you know, this one ship shooting at some enemies, you know, and that's all pretty standard. However, behind me and around me is a huge space battle going on that we can see. All right, and these are all individual ships all flying around, actually shooting real bullets at each other, blowing each other up, that sort of thing, all right? All simulated. Now, obviously, I died while I wasn't looking. This is all going on in the background, running in real time. Now, you may notice here in the hierarchy, the one thing we haven't done yet is implemented um, entity component particles. Uh, and so we're still instantiating game objects for these particle effects that you're seeing here. But all the bullets, all the ships, all of the logic, even the logic of the single player and the input, all of that logic is done using jobs, using the entity component system. And it adds, obviously, you know, visually a little complex there, but uh, the idea is that it adds this uh, ambiance of, wow, look at this, this is amazing. Look at how much stuff is happening around me. Maybe it's a zombie game and the ability to simulate, you know, real massive numbers of zombies all moving individually and stuff like that. I, you know, the sky is really the limit with this. The point is that we can get just tons of performance using this system, uh, assuming we do just a little bit of work in understanding how to best, you know, utilize the entity component system, how to separate our, our data from our functionality, how to work with the entities component data in these systems and stuff like that. So a lot of performance to be gained, a lot of really cool stuff. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this presentation. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out, uh, mike at unity3d.com or on Twitter at Mike Geig. Download the Entity Component System, get started, try it out. It's really cool and you will be just amazed at the performance improvements that you can get.